There we go. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Among ancient ruins, oh, oh. what is this? Evil grows once more. What is this? What is this? The seed of Holy corruption frick. advances, spreading dread Holy and frick. despair. We must give chase. What in the world? This looks like a completely different. Oh, oh that, that's the spear! That's the javelin, dude! Oh my god! Oh, the UI looks awesome. Oh my god, it's so loud, though. It's so loud in my headphones. These sands hide what in the frick? What is that? Oh my god. Dormant what? Tava 2.0? Hunt down the seed and put an end to this madness. If Rake lasts. Holy shit, this life. looks amazing. What is that? Whoa, dude, what? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, dude. That looks amazing. What in the world? That trailer really shows what we have achieved Holy with Path of Exile 2. Frick, I am dude. so proud of the efforts of the entire how's, team. How's chat feeling together. about this? At ExileCon, we announced that Path of Exile 2 That's, is a true oh sequel to Path god. of Exile. So that means a new seven act campaign. The javelin, it means a whole though. new skill gem system, new items, Heart new monsters, right character now? classes. All the ascendancy classes are completely new. It's got cutting edge next generation graphics, as you just saw. Basically, it's everything you would expect from a sequel to Path of Exile. Holy but we're not just shit. throwing away our legacy, we're embracing it. Both campaigns will be fully playable from within the same game yep. plan. You'll be able to play through the original Path of Exile storyline or the new Path of Exile 2 campaign on the way to the shared endgame. All of your old characters will still be playable, and of course, any microtransaction purchases you've made in Path of Exile will carry on to the sequel. At ExileCon, we introduced the dark forests of the island of oh, Logan, man. where you start your journey. Today, we're proud to showcase Path of Exile 2's second act, which takes place oh. in the Vastiri Desert. Oh, so it's desert. Act 2 is. Okay. Welcome to Path of Exile 2's second this act. This is so epic right now. As you saw in the trailer, Act 2 is centered around a caravan of Marraketh called the Ardura who live in the Vastiri Desert. You're chasing another caravan from an opposing tribe called the Faradun. Okay. There's a set of large ancient gates blocking the progress of the caravan through Ooh, a desert pass, so you're so being good. sent through the Traitor's Passage to unlock them. We shall wait here, like the UI, like, but the military I like the experience bar the and Make haste. flasks and stuff look badass. Path of Exile 2 is a lot more than just new acts. We want combat to feel both brutal and oh, responsive, look at the even at low levels. Speed on that. Oh my We're ensuring God. that each weapon type has unique and different mechanics. Oh, it's a each spear, weapon dude. class feels this different so to cool. play, and today we're going to start by demonstrating the new spear weapon class. Spears are a weapon class favoring mobility with both melee and ranged attack options. To that end, each spear will grant you at least one mobility skill. Like looking at what in this saying, case, the oh spear comes with both an engage and disengage skill. Spear height. When you engage, it increases your melee damage for a short time, and that really encourages you to be mobile during combat. I like the UI a lot. One of the skills we're using here is called Whirling Slash. When you use Whirling Slash, it creates a sandstorm that grows in size each time you use the skill. When you leave the sandstorm, it explodes, dealing damage to nearby monsters. A great way to do that so much is to use a disengage too, like the running skill, which stuff. makes you fly backwards and throw projectiles. God, it looks so good. In POE 2, each area's mini-boss is a much more substantial fight with interesting mechanics. You'll be able to find at least one mini-boss in each area of the game. One thing I love about this boss in particular is that it destroys the Rattle ceiling when page. it slams the ground, letting in more light. Clever players will notice oh. that if they're standing in the light, then they're not going to have any rocks falling on their head. Okay. So it's like environmental... A rapid assault skill that we're using against this boss does three rapid stabs, oh, followed by a fourth stab that deals more damage and can stun, if you're willing to commit to a long attack time. 
While developing the skills for Path of Exile 2, we were really thinking a lot about designing skills that could be cancelled early to dodge, or you can commit to the full attack for maximum damage. This looks really fucking good. It's so cool that they're showing us the spear stuff. Oh my god. One of the skills we're using here is called Spear Field, which creates an area of spears coming out of the ground that impale oh, yeah. monsters who walk into them, causing them to bleed. As the monsters move towards you, they take damage, so using your mobility skills really cool. as a way oh, to God, move dude, away from them is wreck. a great strategy here. This thing is some damage. In Path of Exile 2, we've invested a lot in our animation system. I'm sure you're noticing the animations are looking a lot better than they did in POE 1. But yeah, there's also do. a lot of subtle detail, like characters having different run animations depending on how fast they're moving. When we use a Quicksilver Flask here, you can see the character changes to a sprinting animation. Yeah, it's really cool, actually. It looks really good. Wow, the spider animations, too. This looks amazing. Oh, look at that art. Now that we've arrived at the ancient gates, we're going to show you another of the new weapon oh, classes crossbow. in Path of Exile 2. Crossbow. Crossbows. What? Crossbows are special in that they grant attack skills oh implicitly. Oh my god, they this actually particular have crossbows. crossbow grants power shot, which is a high damage single target attack. In order to modify oh what Power Shot God. does, you're going to need to equip Bolt skill gems, which change the type of bolts that are loaded into the crossbow. Here we've got three different bolt skills oh that the character can God. switch between it depending on the situation. Oh my God, so cool. Permafrost bolts can be used to disrupt packs of enemies to prevent them from closing in on your position. You can then follow up with armor piercing bolts nice. to do plenty of damage. Man, they've been putting a lot of work in. In this area, we're helping Asala, leader of the Ardura, to open the ancient gates and let the caravan through. Now, I'm, I'm realizing the gameplay is a lot slower. And this is Act 2. Because the bolt types are the skill gems, support gems that are added to them will modify whatever the skill is that you're using. Here we're going to add multiple projectiles to our incendiary bolt. Okay, now let's see it, see it. And Dan, do they have a follower? Or is that just part of the. Someone that's following them? Okay, those are blue. God, does it look so good? A lot of detail in the backgrounds and stuff. It's crazy. In Path of Exile 2, we're doing a lot more interesting things with monster packs. Here you can see some of the monsters patrolling around. Watch, they, they've been using that with uh, Heist. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, oh, they're rock monsters. Okay. Frost is really cool. That's like the biggest question though, is like, how is the end game gonna feel in POE 2? Like, how fast are you gonna be? It's gonna be a lot slower. I imagine they're gonna do all this, these seven acts, and then they're gonna re probably do all the maps or something. I don't know, like, you know, the end game's gotta be different. It looks really good, though. Crossbows and Now we're coming spears. to another Let's example go. of the Path of Exile mini boss, Lim the Impaler.
Oh, what the? Frick? Ow. Oh, wow. These are just little mini bosses, huh? The boss has dropped another type of crossbow, a siege crossbow. Look at that. This crossbow no. grants the siege cascade skill. The skill is also modified depending on what type of bolts you're using. That's cool with the caravan in the back there. We try to add a lot more little details to combat in Path of Exile 2. You might notice that the monsters who die while burning have charred corpses. We really want to make sure that there's a feeling that as you leave the battlefield, there's clear evidence of what combat took place there. Huh, that's pretty cool. That's a little bonus, you know. Like that, the, when he gets hit, he gets hit. Wait, was he sliding? What are you doing on this early? Oh, the PoE announcements. Dash there. I'm being a uh, I'm being a react Andy. What's up, box? Damn. This is the perennial king, the leader of the Faradun. His goal here is to prevent you from catching the Faradun at any cost. The music. this boy do the boss he looks absolutely insane what is that to destroy him I guess huh Damage there. We will finish this, but not today. Make haste. He must not escape. Oh, you're out, Chase. Wow, they're showing quite a bit, actually. Quickly, he conjures the very sands against us. This madness has gone on long enough. The king huh. is not the man I once knew. And sense swallow me if I do any more to enable him. You plan to continue your pursuit, yes? You will not catch him. Not without me. We cannot follow through the raging sands. Let us return to the caravan and question this defector. Like, wow, this is the so Ardura good. caravan, your town in Act 2. 
Okay, so you're in the moving act town. <laughs> I am Asala, the Sekima of the Ardura. I care not where you came from, nor what caste you might have been there. All so Act 2 is a moving town. You have shown yourself capable in battle, Jinga. Interesting. Remain a friend to the Ardura. And you adding, uh, have nothing to this game yet? No, they're adding us. spears and crossbows. So far that we know. Has told us, the situation is dire. This Balbalic will live or die based For, on uh, weapon type. in pursuit of the seed of corruption. Ask her what questions you will. Then we, Adura, will decide her fate. You look so good. You need not trust me. You will see so the that means there's going to be a boat town enough. then? I ask nothing of you. Only that you do what you know is right. One of the things we really wanted to do in Act 2 was to use the mobility of the caravan to allow the player to choose how they explore the act. Wait. Here you're given four options on how to proceed. There is a tribe of lost Wait. men that inhabits the Mastodon Badlands. They worship the bones of those long ago beasts. And that faith has given rise to powerful tasks that Wait. can somehow call on storms and strike enemies with lightning. The king wishes to steal these objects of worship and use their lightning in war. Do what you must. Though events demand so you, you choose, tread on go? the valley of the dead, do not do so flagrantly. Keep your presence light, cleanse what corruption you can, and we shall skirmish with the Faradun to protect your flank. Once you've picked your destination, the caravan will travel to that area and come to a stop so that you can disembark and go on your quest. Is that undead people over here? See that over here? Because we just got the Storm Sphere skill as a quest reward, now would be a great time to switch back to spears and use some ranged abilities. Okay. Storm spear. spear fires a lightning projectile which splits on Dude, contact. Dude, is there going to be a Spartan class? Okay. It's like, it's like the Amazon. The other skill and, uh, we're using here is called too. Blazing Lance. What blazing that Lance thing? creates a what pile of thing? fire from the ground, dealing damage guy. over time. However, if you're willing to stand in place for long enough, you can throw a second spear that will fan the flames from much Those more damage. some big boys. Some big boys. Oh, what just happened? Whoa, dude, that's so cool. Oh, my God. Oh, we just found a unique spear. It's called Devata's Wind. This spear has an extra modifier that synergizes really well with Storm Spear. When you disengage, you get two additional projectiles on your projectile skills. Okay. Those things are like little mini Godzillas. Oh god, there's three of them. That fire one's really cool. I'm so happy that they're putting crossbows in. I've always wanted crossbows in the UE. The spear's really cool too. Like, even the gear itself looks cool. Which is a, a big plus. So even like people that don't have like MTX and stuff, like it's really really cool. I wonder if the MTX and stuff is like gonna get like like some older MTX is gonna get updated because it will look really outdated. That spear move is really really cool. Man, those mobs hurt though. Like, really hurt. Like, that thing has some health. So far, the, the, the gameplay is a lot slower, which is good. I, I definitely want Huey to slow down a little bit. But again, it's only Act 2, which is probably equivalent, because there's only 7 Acts, which is probably equivalent to what, Act 3? Probably? Act 3, Act 4? Act 3. Oh, 
Oh, that thing is so cool. That's a cool monster. Beat the Bone Colossus. Such a cool animation. So, is there two bosses here? Oh, there is. Oh, oh. Oh, dude, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. That's the act two, man. <laughs> this is like some final bosses in DOE. Okay. So good too. One down. How much XP do you get there? Oh. Oh, that's one more for some reason. Mastodon Tusk. Is that it? If you have any questions about what you just saw, we'll be doing a Q&A later on. While Path of Exile PoE 2 definitely so won't be released this year, we do have a Path of Exile expansion you can play one week from now. I'd like to introduce Path of Exile All Ultimate. right, what are we getting? This is the next league. This is the next you league. You only live once, Exile. What we got? Make your choice. What is this? What is this? Like a lot like ritual. A but. simple ultimatum. Leave with your life and a meager reward, or risk it all for a chance at ungodly riches. Wait, what the For each trial you accept, the challenge grows. Wait a minute. But fail and leave with nothing. Oh, so it's like a, it's like kind of like ritual in a way. Salted orb in there. Would you deserve eight new gems? Core drop pool. Wait, core drop pool. Uh, Lord's labyrinth reworks. Wild mods. Cataclysm. What? Abyss. Essence. They're all reworked. Betrayal, Blight, Breach. They're actually reworking all of them. Oh my god. They reworked all of it. It's like a huge rework for the whole game. Ultimate reward requires ultimate risk. Face the ultimatum. Oh my. Oh, he's, he's the big baddie. Oh my god, dude. I'm freaking out. Nerfed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when some people think of the Val civilization, they think of they reworked it all. Or Queen at Zeri, or Lost Temples in the Jungle. But I think of risking your items. Oh From my Val god! Orbs, I I double cannot corruption, wait. the whole Val or No Balls meme. We had oh. to make sure that this expansion was about the concept of risking your items to get great reward. Oh In each area god. of the Ultimatum League, you'll meet the Trial Master, an emissary of the Val entity okay. only known as Chaos. On behalf of Chaos, the Trial Master enacts trials where Exiles must risk an escalating set of valuable rewards as they attempt to overcome progressively more difficult encounters. In each trial, you'll be presented with a reward, yeah, an objective, and a selection of difficulty modifiers that make the trial harder. Once you've chosen one of the modifiers, oh, you, you must then complete choose. that objective under the constraints so it's like you build of that your modifier in order to win arena. the reward. Is that new Sunder? 
If you succeed in the challenge, the Trial Master will present you with an ultimatum. Either walk away with what you have earned so far, or risk it all to try to win additional rewards. He'll offer you another item if you can select an additional difficulty modifier and complete the challenge with both modifiers present. If you fail though, you'll lose both rewards and walk away oh with God. nothing. Oh, that's me. If you succeed, you'll be offered an additional reward in exchange for adding How's yet another difficulty gonna go? I mean, I guess you just you don't want to risk it, right? Like, this cycle log continues out. until the rewards become increasingly valuable and the encounter extremely oh, difficult. Uni. You'll have to pick a point to end your run and claim your spoils before you make the encounter too hard and lose everything. Oh, okay, so you just build up your own loot, pretty and much. And its longest, an ultimatum in endgame maps can sometimes have up to ten fast trials in a row, with a special surprise in the last one. In maps, you'll occasionally find items called inscribed ultimatums. What is this? These items can be placed in the map device to transport you to the Trial Master's domain. Each inscribed ultimatum specifies an offering that you must bring with you, a reward you can earn, and an assortment of ultimatum difficulty modifiers. If you're able to complete the trial, the Trial Master will reward you with a specified reward, which is usually worth around twice the value of the item you must bring. Oh, For example, you may be asked to risk an exalted orb to two win a exalts. stack of two or potentially risk a stack of 5 to win a stack of 10. Oh my goodness. Naturally, inscribed ultimatums can, can be traded with other players. Oh, no, so 10, if you don't feel 10, capable right. of completing a difficult challenge, you may be able to trade it away for a portion of the difference in price between the, the reward highest, and the right? item that must be risked. Likewise, if oh, you no, have you a powerful do character, you, do you may be able to selectively trade for profitable ultimatums to run. I can't. There no, are also I'm unique the items that can only be obtained from ultimatum. Uh, One such unique is the Glimpse of Chaos Foul Mask which provides powerful benefits yes, to your maximum zero. life, mana, and energy shield at the cost of having severely reduced elemental resistances and no chaos resistance. The item increased can be corrupted multiple times and has unique corruption outcomes, such as removing a random modifier or transforming it into a different random corrupted hey, unique helmet entirely while working? All right, that retains dude, its corruption implicit mod. Holy frick. Another new Val unique oh, item cool in shield. Ultimatum is Mahuzotl's Machination, which Prop grants you six soul. keystone yeah. passives at once. Combining all of these keystones results in some very unusual outcomes, and the item features an entirely new unique keystone as well. Oh, dude, it's in the shield. We've worked hard rotates. to make sure that Ultimatum doesn't punish you for being in a party with other players. Party members compete in trials together, but have separate rewards available to them that will need to be locked in to begin the trial. Each player votes on which difficulty modifiers to select. Oh, they did party play. If there's play a draw and votes, the modifier will be chosen at random. Oh, sick. If one player wants to take their reward and opt out of the next difficult trial, they're able to do so without stopping the other party members from continuing. Wow. Rewards are dropped allocated to the players who earned them. That's cool. They actually so that's Path of Exile Ultimatum. I can tell you, on release day, a lot of our developers are looking forward to watching Twitch so we can see players risking far too much in order to try to get good rewards. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Speaking of rewards... There's a lot to talk about here. We oh. had a look at Path of Exile's past reward systems, and we honestly feel many of them are out of date, many of them kind of lack identity, oh and God. to top it all off, like the core drop pool of just items that drop they actually doing the system. just wasn't really compelling enough. Like, you know that feeling where any monster could drop a mirror? We want that for, for a whole slew of different items. Oh, please. And so we've made that. a lot of changes to Path of Exile's reward systems. There's a bunch of oh, ones to the core God. drop pool to keep it really interesting. There's ones to basically every piece of League and expansion specific content. And we're going to go through all of those for quite a while now. Oh, my and God. And I should mention that every change we're about to discuss like not, not only affects the Ultimatum <laughs> League, but also Standard League too. Oh, GGG. We started by reviewing which items can drop from monsters and chests in the core game. To make sure the core drop pool remains compelling, we've made various changes. You can now find two additional currency items as core drops, Orbs of Binding from the Harbinger League, and the new okay. Veiled Chaos Orb, which we'll reveal in more detail soon. Veiled Chaos Orb? We've also added five new Atlas base types, like this Energy Shield Recharge Amulet. Okay. These drop in specific regions of the Atlas of Worlds and have some powerful new implicit mods. Another topic related to the core drop pool is that of boss runs. Veteran community members will remember when people used to do Val Oversoul or Dominus runs over and over because they were a profitable use of time. Final Act bosses now drop more and better items, giving you a much more satisfying close to a difficult act and a more item-focused approach to getting ready for maps you if you prefer. Drop claims to go, oh, I got a... What? We have also added a bunch of very powerful and I valuable leads. I just the face guarded wings. I just got a drop. Let's go. This means that they can drop from any Thank sufficiently you, high-level uh... monster without you having to engage with specialized content. Examples of these are Badge of the Brotherhood, Asylum, Pledge of Hands, Maloney's Mechanism, Brutus's Lead Sprinkler, and Headhunter. 
What? The goal of all of these changes is to make sure that every monster you kill on Path of Exile has a chance to drop something incredibly valuable, regardless of what content you're playing. You a headhunter? A boss can drop a headhunter? On head top of all of that, we have added a handful of new vendor recipes, which let you make some pretty cool stuff. We really miss the days when players were scrambling to try to find unknown recipes, and so we're looking forward to seeing how long it takes oh. for you to discover how these ones work. We have also introduced a new type of reliquary key into the core drop pool for this expansion. If you're very lucky, you can find a Val reliquary key from any monster or chest in Path of Exile. When consumed in the map device, it gives you access to a vault with a chest that drops a special foil version of a Val. Oh, fishing poles have been item. in the game for a while. I just never found Each one. Each unique has an equal chance of dropping. Due to the value and power level of the items contained within, this is the rarest reliquary key ever added to Path of Exile. They're super rare. What is that? The rest of our reward changes relate to items that you can earn by playing past content like prior leagues and expansions. We have two goals here. The first is to add and improve items so that all past Dude, content is a compelling set of rewards. Right I bet you people are just The second out. goal is to make it so that the best way to get any reward is to play the content that is primarily associated with that type of reward. Path of Exile's first expansion, Sacrifice of the Val, yep. introduced a new ultimate Adziri. boss, Adziri, Queen of the Val. This fight holds up pretty well these days, considering that it is seven years old, but its rewards yes, really need to refresh. Boss. The sacrificial garb base type that drops from Atziri has been significantly improved with the addition of an implicit mod that grants plus one to the level of all Val gems you have equipped. The armor We've looks also badass. added two new unique items to Atziri's drop pool and two okay. more to Uber Atziri's. One of which is the Atziri's Rule Judgment Staff, That's which prevents cool you staff. from being stunned or having your damage reflected. It grants a skill that alternates between Flames of Judgment and Storm of Judgment when used, as if you absorb the powers of Atziri herself. Skipping forward to 2016's what are they doing? What are they doing? we have made some changes to how you receive your Labyrinth enchantments. Okay. Previously, when you completed the Labyrinth and went to enchant an item, yep, yep. you couldn't see what random result you'd get. True. Now, the result for each type of enchantment is shown to you in advance, so you can make the right choice. In the Eternal Labyrinth, you're now offered three different helmet enchantments to pick between what? in addition to the boots and gloves. Oh, this so will make cool. it a lot easier to find enchantments relevant to the skills you're using and to apply them to appropriate Oh, items. it's huge buff. In 3.14, we're going to stop giving out unique jewels for each day's fastest Labyrinth runs, and we have added these jewels as oh, very rare drops finally. that you might find in the Labyrinth's final reward chests. Another highly requested Labyrinth-related improvement is that you can now consume an offering to the Goddess and the map device to open portals directly to a random trial. Oh, this greatly the accelerates the, the speed at which you can find your final trials. Thank you. We've also <laughs> added two new Labyrinth-specific unique items, including the Scales of Justice unique what shield, which rewards building your character with a careful balance of life and mana. Oh my god. If used correctly, so you'll much. be granted protection from shock and ignite, as well as additional fire damage. Kadira Perandus now has a much larger selection of unique item rewards. We have also rebalanced all sources of Perandus coins so that Perandus content is still the best place to get them from. A craft introduced in Harvest kind of destroyed the Perandus coin economy, so we're absolutely fixing that at the same time. Essences have been numerically rebalanced and are in general stronger than they were before. Screaming essences okay. can now be used to reroll rare items, in addition to their capability to upgrade items too rare. The four corrupted essences have had some of their less useful outcomes improved or replaced. Now, the only way to get the powerful upgrade only top wow, essence is through lot. remnants of corruption, Play, build which come from shit. essence content. Blessings, the currency used to Those upgrade wings. breach uniques, can now be used to upgrade breach stones between tiers also. What? Abyss jewels have been rebalanced and are on average more powerful than they were before. We have also buffed Abyss chests to make sure that they are the best place to what get is Abyss that? jewels. Attack movies doing. We have also introduced Abyss Scarabs and have added four new Abyss-specific unique jewels, Abyss. such as Techrod's Gaze, a murderous eye jewel that increases your main hand critical strike chance and your offhand critical strike multiplier based on how many murderous eye jewels you have equipped. Another example is the Ulaman's Gaze Searching Eye Jewel, which counts how many searching eye jewels you have equipped and grants your projectiles a chance to be able to chain when colliding with terrain proportional Man, to this were, number. They were talking about these the badge, unique jewels have a chance to drop from and any of the Yuji that they were talking about the and Badger was a gambling deaths. man. And, he's and these right. encounters are now by far the most reliable way to obtain right, decisions. This is going to be the new build. improvements for. Uh, we have added loot. a handful of new beastcrafts, such as add a mod to a map or add a mod to an influenced item, which consume existing beasts. There are some other aspects of beast crafting that we've been okay. keeping our eye on for a while, and we're taking this opportunity to rework them so that high level gameplay is less reliant on obtaining certain beast crafts. Now, when you use a splitting beast craft recipe on an item, both copies are marked as split, which prevents them from being split again. You cannot imprint split items. 
not imprints what one I of my favorite nerf. reward changes in this expansion is that incursions temple of atsuato can now be itemized once you have access to the map device alva can turn your completed and ready to run temple into a tradable object that can oh. be consumed in the map device oh, this so means cool. that players can specialize in either making temples to trade to other players or trading for temples that are ready for them yeah because some people don't like running temples there have also been a lot of changes to the temple. I don't really run temples. As you temples. may know, specific rooms in the Temple of Atsuado can drop unique incursion items that can be later upgraded. Many of these base unique items have been improved in this update. Previously, the temple's boss, the Omnitect, dropped random rare items with special incursion mods on them. Now it also drops rare items with incursion mods based around the themes of the rooms your temple contains. Okay, Higher tier rooms cause more rare items. Wait, did they change the life Specific thing? rooms now add specific monster packs to the temple, which results in more monster density, challenge, and reward. Temple mods have been buffed so that if your temple has more high-tier rooms, then it's equivalent to a good map. We have performed a modernization pass on rewards from temple rooms so that they're competitive with rewards from newer leagues. The explosive shroom also contains some basic chests that can be opened with flash powder kegs if you don't need them for opening a path elsewhere in the temple. Huh? Delve has had a big increase oh, to early what they rewards doing and a reduction to the quantity of high tier rewards spawning at very yes. deep depths. What are they doing? The end result is that Delve was a lot more rewarding for almost everyone, but a few extreme players who delve very deep will not be getting quite so rich from it. A big problem with rewards and betrayal Wait, is, is that players deem it not worthwhile to kill Katarina because it resets your betrayal syndicate board. In this I, expansion, we have massively <laughs> increased the incentive for doing this. Now, if you manage to kill Katarina, all Syndicate members drop their rewards at one tier higher than they previously would. This change required the introduction of a new fourth tier of reward from each Syndicate member and encourages the use of a larger variety of Syndicate targets and safe house leaders. We have improved rewards that were not as interesting or valuable as the best ones. For cases where we deemed rewards too powerful, we moved them to tier 4 rather than nerfing them. The tier 4 rewards are approximately twice as powerful as tier 3 ones were. We've also added a new unique item to Katarina's drop pool as further incentive for killing her. The cane of Kulamak drops only from Katarina. Similar to Paradoxica, it has three veiled modifiers that must be unveiled one at a time via Jun. This means that each version of the cane could be entirely different, and because of the way the veiled modifier system works, you have the chance to get three mods that potentially synergize extremely well, or maybe just a crazy bag of mods that don't work together. Staff Furthermore, really the cool. cane itself scales well, the up the of any unveiled me. modifiers on it. We have made some changes to how unveiling mods works. You still get okay. offered a choice of three mods, but these are now more powerful versions of the existing ones. Okay. The powerful ones are unveiled onto items, and the normal versions are the ones you unlock that can be crafted onto items. Also, progress towards unlocking crafting of Veiled mods is at a slightly faster rate than before. Some very powerful Veiled modifiers are now only available at their original strength on the unveiled version of the modifier, and the crafted version of the modifier has been lowered in power. Okay. Earlier in the presentation, I alluded to the new Veiled Chaos Orb as an yep. item that has been that added really to Path cool. of Exile's core drop pool. This new currency item rerolls the target item with new mods, like a regular Chaos Orb does, but one mod is guaranteed to be a Veiled mod. While it can drop from any monster or chest in the game, by far the most effective way of getting it is from Isling and some Betrayal safe houses. Veiled? Oh, they said Veil. I keep saying it. We've introduced veil. three new types of incubators for Blight, Metamorph, and Delirium, and okay. have modernized the rewards from the other incubators. The item yield from chests and blighted maps is now affected by a portion of the map item's quantity, giving you a reason to roll your blighted maps if you can handle the additional challenge. Anointments to blighted maps have been rebalanced and reworked so that each has its own purpose and with a consistent increase in reward as the oils get rarer. This is basically entirely buffs, because one big nerf we needed to do was already done last league. You can now corrupt blighted maps. These can very rarely drop the new tainted oil, which allows Wait. you to apply anointments to corrupted items. Wait, what? We have also introduced blighted scarabs. Oh my god, we've added so much. two new types of like catalysts on speed and critical strikes, respectively. These new catalysts are rarer than previous ones. Okay. As discussed in the recent development, oh yeah, let's harvest. The current what do you got? version of harvest is too rewarding, so we're rebalancing its crafting and also increasing how often you'll encounter portals to the sacred grove. The current version spams you with way too many crafts, so each seed has a chance to grant a craft now, reducing the overall number of crafts you can perform per garden, though you will encounter the grove 60% more than you did before. Some of the most powerful crafting options have been removed or changed. The heart of the grove encounter is now a map fragment that can randomly drop from tier 4 harvest bosses instead of rarely replacing the entire grove when it spawns. 
With the release of Ultimatum, Ritual will be added to the core game, with a okay. chance to occur in each map you play. It has also been added to the Atlas passive skill tree system and is available as a Sexton mod. Okay. So we're getting ritual. Almost every time we release a league, we later roll it into the core game with a chance to spawn in maps. Usually 10%, sometimes 5%. When Ritual is added to the core game, we are standardizing this rate at 8%, which means a small decrease for some leagues and an increase for Harvest. We have rebalanced other things to compensate, like the rate at which high strokes level up. Most Atlas passive trees have the same increase in chance for bonus content, meaning they now offer more than double the chance of encountering your preferred content. So I just spent a ton of time describing lots of buffs to Path of Exile's different reward systems, and there was one nerf that I left to last. Okay. And that's because it's a nerf to a league that I kind of care about a bit. Talisman was one that I kind of led the design on, and players joke that it's my favorite league. Now, in the 3.12.3 content update, there was a change to Talismans. Basically, they weren't good enough, so the team decided to add a random anointment to them, which made them a lot more powerful, and also to juice up the mods to make them well-rolled. Okay. And that was overkill. Like, as you've seen recently, talismans have just been dropping with insane mods and great anointments. And we felt in this expansion, especially because you can use tainted oils in order to uh, redo the anointments on talismans, because now you can modify corrupted amulets. Yeah. Honestly, they don't need the well-rolled mods anymore. And so we've removed that. Talismans are still compelling, but they're not quite where they were in the last league. Okay. Every Path of Exile expansion needs new ways for players to slaughter yes, their enemies. Yes, the new skills. In Path of Exile Ultimatum, this takes the form of four new skill gems and four support gems. In line with Ultimatum's Val theme, these gems focus on blood, the idea of spending life rather than mana to use your skills. Okay. Alongside the new skill and support gems, we've also made some adjustments to the low life mechanic, including changing the low life threshold to 50%. Okay. This makes it much easier and safer to stay on low life for builds where it matters. Okay. Typically, when players create low-life builds, they rely on energy Petrified shield to protect blood. themselves against incoming damage. The new skill Petrified Blood enables low-life builds to instead use some of their life ball to absorb hits. Okay. While it's active, you can't recover life above 50% through any method other than flasks. Sources of life recovery, like life regeneration, and life leech only apply to the bottom half of your life pool. Additionally, a portion of incoming hit damage that affects the lower half of your life pool is spread out over time rather than being applied instantly. Okay. Corrupting Fever consumes a chunk of your life and grants you a buff that causes all your hits to apply Corrupted Blood to your enemies. Corrupted Blood stacks up with each hit, causing more and more physical damage over time. When you have consumed a certain amount of life to cast skills from your life pool, the buff's duration refreshes. Essentially, as long as you're consuming life to use skills, you'll be causing damage over time to stack on enemies. Be careful, though. The Exsanguinate skill shoots tendrils of blood in front of you at the cost of life rather than mana. In addition That's to a strong cool. physical damage hit, it also applies a physical damage over time debuff, which can stack up to three times. Spell chain you can also support Exsanguinate so that its tendrils chain from one target to the next. Oh, that's cool. I actually Reap like that one conjures a, lot. a giant bloody scythe that swings across yeah, the selected say, area, no. applying strong hit damage and physical damage over time. Each use Reap. of the skill causes it to gain a charge that scales its damage up and increases its life cost up to five times. These charges drop off over time, as well as after killing enemies, making Reap very powerful at stacking up damage against single targets. We've also added two new support gems that have split the existing blood magic support into two separate support gems. The first of these is the Arrogance support, which causes supported yeah, skills to reserve genius. life instead of mana, and also provides an increase to the effect of auras that it supports. Just like the original blood magic support gem, the reservation multiplier diminishes as the gem levels up. The Life Tap support gem causes supported skills to cost life instead of mana. Once you've consumed a certain amount of life to use a skill, you gain Life Tap, which increases your damage for a few seconds. The Cruelty support gem grants a buff called Cruelty, which increases the damage over time you deal with supported skills. It also boosts the hit damage from supported skills, and the Cruelty buff gets stronger the harder you hit. This gem is designed as an additional option for builds that focus on both hits and damage over time. The Bloodthirst support gem is a new option for low-life attackers. This gem adds a percentage really of your life as physical weapon life. damage while you're on low-life, letting low-life attack-based builds really scale their damage, which wasn't an option before. Alongside a Val-themed expansion and Blood-themed gems, it felt right to take the opportunity to improve Val skills, which are supercharged versions of regular yes. gems that charge up with the souls of your slain enemies to deal huge bursts of damage. Your game One of the main improvements Hunter, is that you now get Does far it? more souls for Val skills from damage from many enemies, so your Val skills will recharge faster against bosses. We've also improved the Etzeri's Rain unique jewel. Alongside increasing the duration of your Val skills, Wait, it also grants a chance Hunter? to regain all consumed souls. 
I changed it. Val's skills will also received a balance pass that you can check out in the full Path of Exile Ultimate and patch notes in a few days. Right, there we go. Oops. So we've covered most of the key components that make up Path of Exile Ultimatum. Keep an eye on the news over the packs. next week as we reveal the finer details We're of what's my coming. Money. We'll move on to the Q&A shortly to answer your burning questions, but first let's have a quick look at the new supporter packs that are God, available there, there right now to celebrate so the launch of Ultimatum much, and help fund ongoing development of Path of Exile. Oh my god. The Silver Crescent and Imperial Sun supporter packs come with masses cool. of points to spend in the store. Social cool. frames, forum titles and badges, a download of the digital soundtrack, and of course, exclusive cosmetic microtransactions such as armor sets, alternate helmets, and wow. weapon skins. Those are actually cool. Wait, what's going on? Wait. The Silver Crescent series has an exclusive portal effect, and the Imperial Sun series has an exclusive aura effect. Each series has two packs, and the smaller packs can be upgraded to their respective know, large man, pack portals. anytime while they're still on sale. Cool. These are, of course, in addition to the new core packs that were released at the end of last year. Remember to check those out if you haven't already. I Thank still you need so it. much for your support. I still need my big Purchases core pack. These supporter packs are the only thing I want my, I want my Path, of Path of Exile, Exile shirt. It's sequel Path of Exile 2 and expansions like Ultimatum. The reveals we showed you today are already live on YouTube for you to link to your friends in case they oh missed the live stream. God, Please do so. We're keen to get a big turnout on the release of Ultimatum next week. And we've got plenty more reveals planned for the rest of the year. God damn, There's GGG. a lot more Path of Exile 2 stuff to show off, and we've also got some new progress on Path of Exile Mobile we're keen to share with you as well. Oh, Mobile. <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions from what we've shown you today, please get them ready, because I'm about to be joined by Ziggy D as we do right, a Q&A based on your questions from Twitch chat. Ziggy D is going to be like, what in the hell? I mean, I imagine all everyone is pretty much like that right now. They're reworking the whole system, finally. I was like, they need a quality of life. Like, oh my god. How many people are watching right now? 138,000. I'll comment so so headhunter is gonna be farmable like actually like t it's tied to a boss right but we don't know which one or is it just random drops someone said headhunter on hail rake <laughs> uh I can't even like read chat, they're just going wild. I, I can't even read chat, I can't even read it. It's going too fast. How's it going, Zero? Thanks, yeah. I, th I thought, I thought, uh. I don't know why it was on Moss Hunter, but uh, that was on Pee Wee. Boy. All right, we're getting ready for Ziggy D. Bring us the questions. I got a lot. Oh, I got so much to go over because they reworked like everything, which is good because now they're they're putting stuff on bosses that are actually worth getting. At least I think they're worth getting. I don't know exactly yet. <laughs> oh. It is uh, too much hype, though. And PoE 2 looks absolutely amazing. We're getting spears and crossbows. They're doing crossbows. Wanted crossbows in PoE. <sighs> Which is cool. Very, very cool. Still, we, ha we haven't even seen, like... Uh, I mean, we've seen it. We've seen, like, the transformations, like, druids and stuff will be in PoE 2. But we haven't seen like what moves they'll be getting and stuff like that. But we know there's multiple forms of the of the, the druid. Um just like pretty much like a bear form, whatever will form, you know. And I think it was like a cat form or something, I don't remember. But wow, that's crazy. Good job. Dude, my hype. Oh man. When is this league coming out? <sighs> pretty much, this is pretty much like Ritual like 2.0 though for this like new mechanic, but like with a much more um, it's like more extended. 
Hey, day is next Friday. Is it next Friday? No. Is it? Oh, it might actually be next Friday. Oh, I'm gonna have to take next Friday off. Maybe. Well, I might not have to take it off, but I might have to get off a little early. Take G'day, Saturday. folks, and welcome back to another very exciting looked. reveal oh, okay. and Q&A session with the one and only the Chris Wilson. Good morning, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me. Chris! How are you feeling about the uh, reactions so far? I'm pretty hyped, actually. That was a lot of What's stuff. What's your to thoughts, cover, and it was really cool watching Twitch. Did you watch all of it? Yeah, this uh, method of doing the reveals. Uh, how are you liking it? It seems like, um, like last time, it was jam packed full of stuff, and there's almost like not a second to breathe between different yeah, things. Yeah, so it's a lot to too digest. Much. Yeah, it's. I like this method of showing stuff and getting a chance to discuss yes, it and explain this, things, and it's it's quite personal to get a chance to not like, interact with the community too, about the actual changes amazing. as they're announced, as opposed to dumping Putting the information on our website and, and reading Reddit. So, so it's, they're showing it's a lot off. more fun. Ah, that's and good they showed stuff. Alpha Act 2. Um, so I'm going to jump straight into amazing. POE2 things first. Yep. Um, the ones that stood out to me were were definitely crossbows, spears dude. and crossbows. Uh, two things that I've been very excited to potentially and see in POE one insane. day. I remember asking years and years ago whether we'd get stuff like spears and crossbows. And uh, it was kind of like a, always a, uh, maybe, probably not. It's a lot of work to make the animations for new things like that. So uh, how come, how come, what led to the decision to add two new weapon types? Well, you mentioned animations, and that's actually part of the reason. So previously, the old way we were creating animations in Path of Exile where the way the character rigs were set up just made it really hard to add a lot of new ones. But one of the things with Path of Exile 2 is we can quite trivially add a lot more animations to the characters. And so new weapon types are totally fair game, and we've got some interesting ideas there. And of course, Spears and Crossbows are both iconic action RPG ones that we hadn't done yet, so it makes sense to put them in PoE 2. I imagine that new rigging that system that makes it easier to make that more Wilson ability. skills, but also more interesting and dynamic skills, potentially. Absolutely. And this custom animation for each skill, basically, a lot of the Path of Exile 1 skills will use whatever animation is appropriate. Sometimes new animations, of course, but it's often kind of the closest animation we have, whereas in PoE 2, we're pretty much animating everything we can by hand. Awesome stuff. Now, chat, we have some pre-prepared questions to give you time to formulate and ask some questions, but do ask questions in chat. We have some helpful people in the background taking questions which we'll ask after some ones that I've already prepared. Um, so firstly, asking about spears and crossbows further, um, they each have implicit skills. Uh, how many of these are there? So this is a number that keeps on growing. Um, we basically showed you the ones we've got working so far, and um, we expect that to grow, of course, by release. So we have a you know reasonable stable for each. Um, in terms of the crossbow ones, for example, there's currently two main skills that are built into the crossbows you've seen. We hope to add several more. So there's the cascade one and power shot. Um, there'll be several yeah. more damage shapes coming. And then in terms of damage types, we showed you three types of bolts. Imagine the crossbow would be a lot slower, yes, but I understand that the uh, sound of changing between them got annoying in the video, but this is something we're experimenting with. And if we keep it in, it will definitely be an option. That's actually an homage to the 2012 Dread movie. So, you know, we find it funny at least. Um, <laughs> anyway, there's, there's three of those um, ammo types working in the game at the moment, but we'll clearly add a lot more. And so the exponential uh, number of um, final combinations will be pretty high. So did you say like seven damage shapes? We've got <clears throat> there's two damage shapes currently. That's the cascade and the power shot, and we're looking to add several yeah. more. Se so several rather than seven, um, but that you uh, know that could be quite a high number overall. Basically, um, we want to find ones that fit themes for base types of crossbows, and so ideally the end game crossbows will support several of these damage tape, uh, shapes at quite um, high skill levels, and so you'll have a lot of choice as to what you want to use in your end game build. Ah, interesting. I am. Um, this is a pretty interesting distinction between like the damage shapes and the damage types. So. I guess this is the first like modular yeah, it's definitely worth like watching that. the POE too. Like you could always convert really damage types or add different types of damage and stuff like that. But these are the first like skills are effectively they're in two separate parts. Mm. So the the support gems also linked to the bolts. The they finally type changed the enchantments yeah, too. Not the actual um, damage shape thing, the bolt itself. Yeah, the power shot. Gotcha. Um, and that's because of the new skill gem system, obviously, yeah. which now grants skills based on the item sockets, and then you suck it into a completely yes. separate menu, which saw some glimpses of. I bet yeah, their website's which, um, dying right now. Looking forward to seeing how that plays out. <laughs> People um, are freaking out. Is this concept out. of like unique weapon skills going to be extended out to other weapon types? It may do. Um, we're still working out what we're doing with each one of the weapon types, and there's a lot of interesting ideas there. Some of them will probably gain skills. Some of them will just have other ways to identify themselves. I'll give you another example. So you know how in Path of Exile at the moment, daggers and claws are basically the same thing, right? They're both decks yeah. and they you know, use similar yeah. types of skills and so on. So an example of the small tweak we're making there is that claws will count for unarmed skills in Path of Exile 2. So all of the unarmed oh. builds can now use claws. And if you've ever played you know, Facebreak, you'll understand quite a bit of uh, potential there. 
Okay. And so Facebook we're trying where applause. possible to make smart decisions with the base types. But of course, okay. if we had to add a lot of work to them to make them unique, then we'll definitely do uh, well, Hello, okay. Palm. <laughs> I'm seeing a, a few questions already about kind of like distinctions between POE1 <laughs> and POE2 here. People are asking things like, does that mean spears and crossbows can't be used in POE1? So that's tricky because um, it's technically possible to get Path of Exile 2 items on your Path of Exile 1 characters in the end game because of the shared end game nature of it. And so um, if we don't have animation support for the old character classes, we're still working out what to do there. Um, it's one of the problems we're going to have to solve. Right, right, okay. Um, and on that note, I guess, how will we be handling accommodating new weapon types in the existing skill tree as well? It's getting big some combat getting. chris here yeah. right so from a skill tree point of view we haven't announced what we're doing yet with path of exile 2 skill tree um there's going to be some interesting stuff and of course you know it's going to accommodate all the weapon types it supports it Good may up, be yeah. that path of exile 1 characters and hence their skill tree don't necessarily support the new weapon types and you have to play a path of exile 2 character to get them but we kind of expect that by the time that path of exile 2 is out and ready a lot of people are going to be choosing to play path of exile 2 characters because of the vast amount of hey. new content there um, kind of like further on the note between PW1 and PW2, will the yeah, uh, you got it too. I got the faith guard wings like as well. Nice. One -one port, or will it be seeing like PW2 upgrades applied to it as well retroactively? And for like, I guess, how long will it be supported in the future in that way? Right. So, uh, one second. Um, I just got a note by the way on the last question from the team that um, all of the existing Path of Exile 1 characters are going to be swapped over to use the Path of Exile 2 rigs, which adds full support ah. for using spears and crossbows on them. So that's information I did not know, which is actually very helpful, and the team have obviously <laughs> thought of that. Um, with, regard to the, with regard to the campaign itself, um, we're incidentally getting upgrades whenever we improve assets that are used in both campaigns. We want, where possible, to take the best of Path of Exile oh, 1 dude. and improve it for Path of Exile 2. And so when we do that, um, it upgrades it in Path of Exile 1. And so there are also places where we intentionally revamp Path of Exile 1 stuff, like what we did with Lionize Watch. And so the campaign will continue to receive improvements in this way. You know, it's still a fully maintained game. Like, it's a product that we are monetizing and maintaining and, you know, treat with pride and confidence and stuff. But at the same time, we're intentionally putting most of our development efforts into making a new Path of Exile 2 campaign that fixes, you know, perceived problems with the way the Path of Exile works. And so it'll be a bit of a patchwork quilt, I suspect, in a few years, where some of the content will date back to the early 2000s, uh, 2010s, and some of it will be brand new. <laughs> I look forward to seeing how it evolves alongside PoE2's campaign then. Um, a lot of people noted that uh, the stream showed like kind of slowdown in content in PoE2. Yes, I'm, and I'm wondering. I talked about previously that um, uh, it will be a bit of a pullback in terms of overall game speed. Is that still the case? Where are you looking to kind of pitch the Please speed slow down of PoE2 bit, compared to PoE1? We want the Pixel 2 to be a slightly more claustrophobic personal experience, but we understand that when presented with that, players find ways to make their characters go fast. Because after all, these games are measured on what items you find, and that's in direct proportion to how many monsters you kill, and that's in direct proportion to how fast you can go. And so, yes, it is a game where people end up going fast. All of the crazy character builds and more are still possible, so I would rather expect that Path of Exile's speed continues to be a high-speed game once we hit the end game and people get their character builds established. But we still have to try as hard as possible to make it a compelling experience for people that want to play at a normal pace as well. And so while we played at a normal pace through that um, particular showcase there, it's possible to run through, right? You can you know, be very smart about which monsters you kill. You can do yeah, the whole thing. I mean, right there's always going to be speed running, but like the, um, the average. So, yes, we're player. trying to make things a bit slower, but we're not doing it in a way that's going to hurt the spirit of Path of Exile because we understand how people like to play and we want to support that. Right. Um... I, I remember hearing that both campaigns would be roughly similar length, and the new it's ones. It's the new support pack. I know. I, I, I should. I imagine get things it. like boss fights. I think and, I want to get the portal uh, one. Certain encounters and stuff like that will be like more difficult and longer than comparable encounters in the previous campaign. Yeah. Then, right? Yeah, and that's partly because when we were making the mini bosses in Path of Exile One, it was literally a matter of, oh, let's take a bandit and let's scale it up and give it a name and throw heavy strike on it, and that's a boss. If you see what I mean, let's take a rower and retexture it and put an aura on, and that's a boss. Whereas here we're planning them into the levels. We think of an idea for a level and say, what would be the coolest thing we can put in this level? And then we build that. Do the PoE2 and bosses so look? It means the boss insane. fights are significantly more complicated and interesting. And I don't expect that's going to slow players down a lot because we're not like throwing in vulnerability phases into those mini bosses necessarily. But, you know, they're certainly going to be interesting fights at the very least. And uh, it was talked about making bosses more rewarding as well. Do you think like the average boss in PoE2, since they're going to be harder, is also potentially going to be more rewarding as well? 
we want to make sure the rewards are pitched at a good level there. And the changes to the rewards of bosses and Path of X are one is just making sure it's worth your time actually going and farming them. If you go and do an Act 10 Katava run, we want it so that you actually get some decent items. And it's worth repeating that process uh, when gearing up for maps. Now, of course, it's probably still more profitable to just go and play maps, but some people want to just get themselves ready before they start expending currency on every area they run. That's good for soul. I do farm. have a bit of a nostalgia for like farming piety and dominus back in the earlier days of PoE 2. Oh, PoE, so I'd be interested to see if there's more of that in PoE 2. Or uh, even sooner, I guess, since a lot of these changes are coming very soon. Um, Matarik asks, will Path of Exile 2 be sticking to a three-month league-based cycle like PoE 1, or is there any intentions to change this at this point? We're pretty happy with the three-month cycle. Um, it's a good duration. We haven't decided, obviously, yet, and it depends a little bit on when Path of Exile 2 is coming out and how it works around dates that year. But, um, yeah, we do expect to continue the uh, league cycle, and it will be quite nice actually getting to make the first leagues for Path of Exile 2 and designing those because it'll be a fresh game where we can find things that integrate really well into it. And, um, well, yeah, when they know, finally, get, when finally, when PoE uh, 2 finally comes out, that to, like, the whole team will be on the one league. It's looking like a... Because right you know, now you have like two teams, on, like, people working on PoE 2, people working on the um, new league. It certainly has higher requirements, so but we're looking into various technology like dynamic level of detail stuff and various other bits and pieces. And a lot of the engine improvements that have been made over the last few years are with view to us basically never dropping frame rate and finding smart ways you know like the dynamic resolution scaling and various other bits and pieces you know if you're io bound for example it uses placeholder textures and so on and it's a fine balance of course between making sure this performs well and always looks good but the intention is that we can run path of exile 2 on a wide variety of systems uh we saw a lot of really nice looking ui improvements in yes. uh, the poe2 trailers i especially like this the is boss poe2 bars in the bottom here. The separate boss bars next to each other and dynamically changing and stuff like that was really cool is there going to be more UI customization in the future for PoE, especially something that's, um, I guess, bothered me in the past is like not being able to do more customization for things like buffs and debuffs and uh, change which things are displayed and their locations? I suspect that if we were to make changes like that, we'd look into rolling it into Path of Excel as soon as they're ready. Um, but it's that it's a hard, it's a it's a difficult line between deciding the right place for the players they can focus on playing versus allowing for customization. And we kind of prefer to just let players get on with playing the game and not allow them to completely change their UI. And this is for a few other reasons as well. From a branding point of view, it's nice if the game looks consistent on each person's computer. And I know that sounds like marketing speak, but it is something where we want to make sure that the game is recognizably a path of Excel. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, from a quality assurance point of view, having it so that there's an infinitely permutable UI, of course, makes it significantly harder for us to test patches. But these are all things we have to balance against the actual usability. And we do like the idea of adding more QOL there. Um, from a UI point of view, by the way, I'd encourage viewers to have another look at the UI, like the HUD in the footage we just showed, because there's some interesting technology used there that I'm going to see if they can notice. Hmm. Was it the pretty boy around the health bar or something else? That's one of the many benefits. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're rendering it in 3D now, so there's some uh, very interesting lighting Ooh. stuff. First. Yeah, I did see very it. Very nice. I did see yeah, it. Yeah, I saw some like uh, interesting lighting changes and some green stuff swooshing over the UI. That might be what you're hinting at, actually, because that's something I noticed, but I didn't know what it was about. Hmm. Anyway, time to scrub over the VODs, well, after the Q&A. Um, Barthab Raccoon is asking, basically, if we're going to be getting more of the integration of things like um, trading UIs and stuff like that in-game. And also, uh, similarly, um, the ideas that were talked about in the past about having the possibility of transferring items like across instances and stuff like that, across instance trading. The change that's most likely to come is an integration of the trade websites into the game client where oh, people can please. basically um, like interact with stuff more easily without actually having to leave the game. And yes. that means that, for example, if you see an item in, in the you know, in-game trade site browser as such, you can click on it to whisper the person directly without having to copy and paste stuff around. That's more likely as the direction that we're going to go. Um, we've talked about our views on trade for quite a while about how it is important that there are Please some barriers to instant acquisition of items um, in order to encourage players to actually play the game to find items while still being able to trade if they want to. And our views on that are still pretty similar. So we don't expect to put it this way. If we were going to dramatically revamp our trade works, we'd just do it. We wouldn't wait until Path of Exile 2. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about Ultimatum. It's on the surface, it looks quite similar to Ritual. I heard a lot of people pointing that out. Uh, what are the key differences like in your mind ritual between Ultimatum and Ritual then? Well, the similarity that we have here is that it's based, it's an in area combat league where you encounter the encounter and then fight some monsters and get some rewards. And this is as opposed to going on a grand heist or collecting, uh, you know, beasts, for example. 
And so that's kind of where the similarities end, though, because after that point, the difference is that Ultimatum gives you a very fine granular control over the difficulty and reward that you're getting. So you have the ability to add up to, I'm going to say up to 10, because that's where it goes in the end game, but usually six up to 10 um, modifiers to the fight that are your choice. You're presented with different options. If you don't want a certain constraint, you just don't have to add that one. And yeah, so you're kind of customizing the fight by essentially adding mods that further um, make it more difficult. And if you're lucky, you'll get an ultimatum run where the mods don't affect your character in a particularly negative way and you find have an easier time. Sometimes you're just fighting through a slog of really hard stuff. And so um, the rewards escalate kind of exponentially here. Like the intention here isn't that you just make your way through the six to 10 rounds pretty easily and get your six to 10 rewards and walk away. The intention is it gets difficult and you have to make a choice of actually stopping. And we want it to even good players while playing through the campaign will reach a point where they say, okay, I've just got to take the stuff and leave. I can't risk the next round because there's an actual 50% chance that I'm going to screw it up and lose all my yeah, stuff. Good. And so this is the first league that people are going to be failing encounters even if they know how to play the game. And that's because they can choose how far they want to take it. Um, which is different than Ritual, because in Ritual it's expected that you're going to kill monsters, up? you're going to get your rewards. Here, the rewards are a lot better. But what uh, do you get? In a little bit, bud. Mm, I do like those risk-reward leagues where you get to have a bit more of a gamble. You pointed out like the idea of the Vile thing being the potential of loss. Um, on the note of loss, some of the reward choices were things like put an Exalt in and, or a stack of Exalts or something and then double it. Um, mm -hmm. Woody or Carrot actually asks how rare are the doubling the currency ultimatums? I'm going to ask the team that, guys. How rare are the inscribed ultimatums? Right, so there's a lot of variety in what they reward. Um, you obviously want the ones that double a lot of currency, but you're generally finding an inscribed ultimatum approximately every 20 maps. I should note, of course, that um, that number will probably change by the time it's released. We're right now with a week to go, tweaking that number on an hourly basis, basically, as we playtest. Um, in addition, these things are tradable. So it's one of those things where a lot of people, when they get one, are going to say, huh, you put five exalts in, get 10 out. Therefore, it's worth up to five exalts profit. I'm going to sell it for four. And then they list it. And then someone else is like, well, that's an easy one exalt profit for me to get that and just do it because their character is a god. And cool. so we're expecting a lot cool. of people it's to just cool dump them idea. on the economy for sale and a lot of people to just buy these up um, for easy yeah, profits because yeah, they know they can handle those mods. I was uh, a little concerned that you might not have the thing for the ritual, but it seems like every ritual that requires you to put something in um, is one of those itemized ones that you can prepare for and only run when you have the, the requirement. The ultimatums that have a specific thing you have to bring are itemized ones, so you know this is going to require, like, for example, there's some that upgrade a good unique to an incredibly good unique, and so it might it might say bring... Um, you know, this item and get out of calms or something like that. And therefore, you know, you just have to trade for the item when you've got the inscribed ultimatum. Bring what item and get out of calms? Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> well, it'll depend. There are pools that it picks from. And so sometimes you'll get ones that are close in value. Sometimes you get ones with a big difference in value. And those are obviously worth more. Oh, so there's actually things like it requires a specific unique that you can yeah. hunt down and then exactly put in. Hmm. Yeah. That's Usually good. with a value difference between the two that's considerable. But our goal is basically, it's got the feeling of double or nothing on those kind of ultimatums. Nice. Awesome. Um, Waras8 asks, will the other skills uh, get reworked, buff, nerfed this time around, or is there any mechanical nerf to existing things? Is um, that in reference to regular skills in the core game with the ultimatum release? Yeah. Um, we do have we do have the usual patch notes coming out, but we try to cover basically just new stuff that we were doing with regard to skills. Um, I don't know the extent of the changes to the other stuff. I will quickly check. Guys, regular skill changes. Um, there's some nerfs and a couple of buffs. So <laughs> smiling. <laughs> it's interesting what people think about that. But no, I mean nerfs are obviously for a reason. It's to keep the game good. And we, you know, philosophically on that, we would rather. Um, gently nerf things that are right at the top and then have to fundamentally change the entire game to achieve the same balance thing in a roundabout way that players don't notice for a while. So it is a much more direct approach that we're taking these days. If something is just breaking the game through power, we'll cut a little bit off the top. Generally, whenever we do that, we're thinking it's still really good. Why are people so angry? And then they settle down after they've actually used it. So we are trying to make sure that the nerfs are just taking a bit of the power off the top and keeping the thing viable and fun still. Uh, there was a new unique that had like a ton of keystones on it, including one new keystone, which I'm guessing we'll have to wait to see what that's all about, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are the other keystones on that item random, or are they set? 
they're a set set of keystones. This is a group of Val keystones that work in interesting ways together, kind of like a puzzle for people to solve. So it'll be quite interesting to see how people okay. work out how to play that character. Okay. It's like a hand tailored uh, character build. That's challenge that shield that drops. So it's pretty cool. Think of it as like a designer's cut version of Path of Excel. This is the true <laughs> way to play, right? <laughs> so CI Eldridge Battery got it. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Um, moving down a little bit, um, uh, Lexay wants to know, will like map mods affect ultimatums that you find or, uh, if I have further addendums to that, uh, what sort of things do affect ultimatums? So guys, what mods affect ultimatums? They're asking about like map mods, for example. Um, from the, when you run it inside the map, it will mm -hmm. the itemized ones that ultimatums, they aren't affected by the map, they just have a bonus to the rest of the game. Right. So it works pretty much how you would expect. If you're playing a regular map that has mods, then the ultimatum that you find in that map, just a regular one, will be fully affected by the mods. Um, the inscribed ones are their own maps unto themselves, and so they don't have map mods because they're not rollable, but they do have a bonus um, to make them equivalent to decent maps. Right. I imagine there's probably going to be some pretty brutal uh, combinations and certain added damage types with certain modifiers that the actual ultimatums in maps give as well, since I notice yes. there's various things like That's swords great. appearing and skewering you. Stuff yeah, this like is that. very much about actually reading the mods and making sure your character can handle it, right? There'll be ultimatums where you want to get a friend to help because that friend is kind of impervious to whatever it is that's going to make it hard for you. <laughs> and as we mentioned, we've made party play actually work really well this time as opposed to being an after. Yeah, I think he's probably really happy uh, about that. I'm very excited about that concept, actually, as well. Yeah, I've been playing say. most of the recent leagues. I uh, co-op with my partner, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. Some leagues are really good for co-op and others just kind of don't exactly work. Um, so it seems like there's been a lot of uh, thought there. Just to kind of clarify, um, each person gets their own separate rewards effectively from the, and they can like uh, tap out and take their reward whenever they want, or yes, they can continue. That's correct. If someone does tap out, um, can they like stay in the area and help you finish your fight? But they're just like their reward sequence ends. I imagine that's how. Hey, it my works. understanding is they're teleported outside it. Let me check. Um, in the regular game, they can still. Right. Okay. So in the regular game, they can still help you out. Uh, but they have to leave the map if it's the uh, inscribed ones, then I'm guessing. Yeah, how does it work with inscribed? Inscribed one only because puts the inscription and gets the... Get Got it. The item. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I guess this was sensible and I should have worked that out. I mean, inscribed ones that has a specific thing that you're gambling and a specific thing you're receiving. And so that's uh, it's only that that occurs, if you see what I mean. Uh... So, for example... You and I are sitting there looking at a 5 to 10 exalt one. And so we're going to come up with five exalts. We're going to put it in the window and we're going to get 10 once, regardless of the fact that there's two of right. us. If we want to play it together and make it a bit harder, um, you know, because there's multiple players, we can do. But it isn't five exalts each. Yeah, otherwise you'd have a beastery situation again where, like, every person in the party gets a copy of the beast and then a copy of a copy and stuff like that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you went that route then. Um, <laughs> Decoy wants to know if there is a... Uh, a boss fight in ultimatum maybe i mean watch the trailer <laughs> again i guess <laughs> nice <laughs> uh, um yeah, asks, can you just leave the ring um meaning the ultimatum ring my understanding is that you're with you have to stay within the ring is that because it's a barrier or because it terminates if you uh, if you're outside the ring for five seconds it's right okay so standing outside the ring for five seconds counts as failing the encounter Oh, so you can dip out for a little bit if you need to catch your dip breath and use the flask. <laughs> yeah, right, that's an interesting change uh, compared to Ritual then, which had the hard barriers. Yeah, rituals, yeah, and this is so. also important for hardcore, of course, where when you're going to fail an encounter, it's better to do it by running away than by physically dying and losing your character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Often that's the correct decision. Uh, changing tack a little bit to some of the like previous League updates, which was uh, a lot of things that people yes. and myself have been asking for for a long time yes uh, so excited good. about veiled mod changes yes um so the Chairman's. veiled mods themselves are now distinct from the craftable modifiers and they're more powerful how much higher are their power level compared to the crafted affixes that they give you so the ones that you unveil onto items are almost tier one in power the intention is that they're really punchy and if you get it you can build a good item around that the crafted ones are lower because you get the ability to just add them at will and so they serve the same purpose they're just not quite as good as if you actually make the item the correct way um the very the amount of difference between um crafted and unveiled depends a lot on the actual mod some of them are closer some of them are much further away uh is there any ones that do like different things like how we have 
some of the higher tier affixes present some new mechanic or something like that? Or is it just generally like, here's more physical damage, that sort of thing? I'll just confirm that. Is this the same thing, really? Yeah, it's the same thing with numerical differences. Gotcha. Huh. Um, so the Veiled Chaos Orb allows you to reroll an item and gives a Veiled Modifier on the item as well. Yes. And unveiling that, uh, just to clarify, does give you crafting progress as well, so it's a way of unlocking those crafts faster. Yeah, the Veiled Chaos Orb is used for crafting and unlocking. Yep, that's correct. Oh, wow. Um, you it said it earlier in the Veiled. I thought uh, it was presentation like that the Chaos Orb drops are part of the core drop pool, right? Not like yes. a Betrayal-specific thing. Okay, yeah. how common are they compared to like a regular Chaos Orb? They're quite... They're not very common. You want to get them through the betrayal system if you want to target farm them, essentially. But you can find wow. them. And the core drop pool thing is more about the fact oh, that so it's they worthwhile really killing monsters okay, because from time to time betrayal. you will actually find one. It will be an exciting thing. But like many things in the game, there's a more deterministic way to get them. Um, this is actually a case of, like, you know, we initially really wanted to have it just as a betrayal reward. But um, I put a strong argument forward that we want the core drop pool to be compelling, and so it was added, but not particularly often. You'll see them, just, you know, not as much as you will from betrayal. Makes sense. Um, can you use the Veiled Chaos Orbs to put Veiled Mods on influence bases? Yes, you can. Oh, awesome. That's, uh, looking forward to some interesting crafting combos here. Um, and can you Veil Chaos, the character signature mods, like, for example, Orion's minus mana cost? No, you can't get those ones through that. Ah, so those ones are still only drop only from those specific characters? Yeah. Okay, um, how many previously League-specific uniques are being added to the drop pool? Um, way more than the six that we listed. Um, it's like 100 or something. Wow. Um, essentially, we looked at all the old League uniques, and there were kind of two ways you could get them. You could either get them by fighting content in that League, or you could get them by killing some specific boss. And all the ones that you get from specific bosses, like, you know, Pale Council kind of stuff and so on, that stuff is still specific to those bosses. But yeah. every item that you could find by fighting League monsters that would drop because they're a monster of that League is now possible to get in the core drop pool. And so, in one swoop, we have made Path of Exile's unique pool significantly more interesting in terms of stuff that you can find by just playing the regular game, while still meaning that the old Leagues have their, uh, you know, interesting rewards. Mm. And uh, exactly how many That's Headhunters am I going to find now? So this is an interesting one, and the verdict is out on our math, because on one hand, um, like, I want to start by saying Headhunter is, is like, clearly in the sights of the balance team of being very unhappy with how powerful this item is, right? And I am putting my foot down and saying, no, Headhunter is an iconic part of Path of Exile. We're not nerfing it. It's going to stay awesome, right? So I'm, I'm representing the community here. Headhunter stays great. But the concession here is that we don't want 47% of characters at the top of here. We don't ninja to have a Headhunter equipped. We do yeah. want to make sure that it is a valuable item that's actually aspirational. And so... Part of the compromise here is you can get it in the core drop pool, obviously quite infrequently, but it's also a little bit harder to get from other sources as well. So obviously there's going to be a lot more of them because you can find them from regular monsters, but there's going to be fewer of them from the various other um, ancillary places you can get them. And so to some extent, this balances out a bit. So randoms are going to be fighting headhunters a bit more than the dedicated players because the deterministic farming of it is harder than it was before. You know, it takes more ancient orb uses, for example. But technically you can just chance your way into it earlier on without having to be a nemesis content and so ideally we will see like headhunter remaining nemesis, a huh? completely amazing item because it has not been nerfed and um still you know being a viable thing for builds it's just a little bit more of a lottery as to whether you actually find one and we think that's actually quite important in this kind of game because it means that a player who's not as good not as lucky normally as other players can just luck their way into something that gives them a ton of currency and yeah. players who know what they're doing have plenty of deterministic options for still getting it and deterministic options for raising currency they can use to just trade for one if they need it. I love the idea of like some first time player who's level 40 something and they find a headhunter and they just wipe it on and be like, oh, this seems okay. Well, that's like previously it happened with mirrors and it happened with obscure rare items they would never notice, right? right? But it was so cool watching some random player get something incredibly valuable and it just changes their game experience. And so we've just made sure that there's a lot of other options that they can find as well that are valuable. <laughs> Uh, uh, Detective Jabsko asks, with the league items that have been changed to global drops, have they lost their league tags? Will you be able to chance them outside of their league now? My understanding is that you will be able to chance items that, because um, they're just regularly in the, in the global drop pool again. So my understanding is you can just chance a headhunter if you're lucky. Okay, cool. Wow. Um, so the, I'm excited yeah, to see the return hard. of the Val Rel Reliquary keys. I quite like those. It's sad to see them gone for quite a while. Uh, it was mentioned that they are the rarest ever added to the game. 
how often will we see them? How's rare is the rarest? We'll find them less often than the previous ones. And Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. our goal here is that they are very treasured things that you find occasionally. We don't want an expectation that people play this league expecting to get a handful of these, right? They're pretty rare. And so it's a thing that you can hope to get. And if you can trade for it, that's also good. But um, a lot of this comes down to the fact that these ones have a different way of distributing items. In the past, we said, okay, we've got some we've got some broken stuff for you guys, like you know, unnerfed counts and so on in the previous ones. And um, we're just gonna like make this fair by making them incredibly unlikely to get. If you watch videos of people opening a lot of past reliquary keys, you'll notice they don't really get the good items that often. There's a bias towards the junk. Even though okay. foily special junk has still got value, of course, because it's a collector's <laughs> item, um, it wasn't a particularly fair distribution. With this new Val reliquary key, we're trying a completely flat weighting. So every item has equal chances of, of spawning. And so while there are some fewer, less valuable items in there, there's also some very valuable vile items, especially valuable in foil, and they're equally likely. And so because of this, we're being careful and making sure it doesn't drop particularly often. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the value of these, because we would rather it be a case that even the foily worse items are still worth something from a collector point of view later, rather than just water it down. I'm going to try and wring a little bit of detail out of you here. (laughs) Is Headhunter in there? Is there a foil Headhunter? I don't believe that Headhunter is classed as a Val item. So this is all the Val items in Path of Exile. There's quite uh, a lot of them. I see. Okay. Um, well, that's a pretty important detail for people that want to like kind of do some math on there because they'll be able to look at whatever's a Val item, count them, and then see one in how many you've got of getting specific items. Yeah, since we'll have a chart the next day, like with Magic the Gathering sets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I look forward to reading some of that detail, seeing what things I should be hoping for. Um, so... A big change is uh, to beast crafting, and mm. uh, in particular, uh, beast item splitting. And uh, for those of you who don't really understand or know what that was all about, um, effectively it was uh, item printer go burr, but um, <laughs> people were able to duplicate uh, certain things at infinitum. So usually stuff like um, white six white socket, good chest bases that can then be crafted, or yeah. other like crafting stage i never did this because i barely did beast caftry and uh so groups of people were able to get together pull resources craft these bases and then uh print them for the rest of the league so uh what led to this change to uh effectively make it so that this can't happen anymore part of it is that when we initially designed the splitting stuff for beast crafting we knew that there was some base because because with an item there's the base and there's the mods on it and splitting will wreck your mods generally and copy the base so in a case where the base is the hard part to get then the splitting recipe um is valuable and so we knew what valuable bases there were in the game beforehand it's just that that pool has increased a lot over time and it's become incredibly abusive abusive with stuff like you know watchstones and heist contracts or heist blueprints and so on and the you know the really good crafted bases for crafting projects and so this was something we were keeping an eye on. And of course, there are ways of balancing it. We could just make those beasts incredibly rare and so on. And eventually it becomes you know, a different way of doing a mirror. But we didn't really like that approach. So we started fighting on a specific basis of like, you know, watchstones and um, heist blueprints, for example, were quite abusive. So we started toning things down there. But the cases keep cropping up. And so we feel that this change here, where you can still duplicate something one time per item, is probably a sensible way to do it. Um, it means that we're not having to fight it on a beast rarity basis. Um, and it still means it's a viable mechanic where if you are crafting an item, you can potentially make two of it using this method. Mm. It kind of follows the rule of mirroring a little bit, although it does make the original effectively mirrored as well so that it can't be yeah. uh, split again. It can still, still be changed, though, obviously. Yeah, it does like prevent that. the cartels from continuing to print many copies of the item, which is a cool mechanic, and I really like that. But the same thing does exist in the game in other ways. Like those new vendor recipes that we've added, right? Some of those have some economic impact, right? What if someone finds yeah, one of those and doesn't these new tell people recipes, how it's done? We just start making the item to try figuring out. That's often It'll be real interesting to see if certain things spike in value in the trade economy um, unexplainably. And, and I'm sure yeah. the uh, trade card. There's got to be some big trading vendor recipes. Yeah. I should note <laughs> that it's still forward. worth, like, if you get a great watchstone um, with, with really good sextants on it, it's probably still worth splitting it because that way you get to essentially duplicate the sextants that way. So there's, there's still quite a lot of uses. You just can't do it for the rest of the league. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on talismans, so be sure you got and kind of like looping into way, this yeah. is the idea of like the value of dropped rare items as well. Mm. So it's changed now so that they uh, drop anointed, but they don't use the affix rolling 2.0 system, yeah. which caused them to drop a lot better. Now, thanks to the new affix rolling system, alongside the like implicits that talismans have implicitly, 
and the uh, random anointments, which could be really good ones, really valuable ones. Um, the effect was that talismans became one of the few rare items that I was like really interested in looking at on the ground and picking up and looting and potentially being an upgrade as opposed to crafting or trading yeah. for my upgrades. I did it seems to be a bit of a goal so that Peewee's striving for to have rares become more relevant relevant again. So I'm curious why they like pull back away from the loot 2.0 system for talismans then. So there's a couple. Um, the first thing to note is that the well rolled mods thing isn't meant to be a loot 2.0 thing, right? The well rolled mods thing is not for um, it's not the item decluttering system, which is a separate thing that we've got going on. It was implemented for heist because when you finished an entire heist and you get offered one or several rare items to pick from, we want to make sure that they're not just complete trash because it is true that you can look through quite a lot of rares before you find something. Mm -hmm. So it's a lever that's available for us changing how drops spawn. With talismans, the original intent of a talisman is that it has a powerful implicit mod and it has random, with normal weightings, explicit mods that cannot be changed. It's corrupted, right? So the normal experience with a talisman is you find one that's got a good implicit and you're using it because of the good implicit. The explicit mods are going to be worse than what you have on a regular amulet because that's just how talismans work. And of course, the god talismans are the ones where you get a good implicit and also luckily get good explicit mods on it. Mm -hmm. So that's the original design intent for the item. Now, we found that, like, obviously people weren't using these and they didn't like them, and our options were to just dramatically increase the implicits on them. But we realized, oh, well, we've got this concept of anointments, why don't we throw those on? And so um, we added anointments, hoping that it would make talismans usable. And I guess somewhat Dude, defensively, um, the decision was made to oh, also oh, juice oh. the mods a bit, because that's new tech that we had available, which certainly helped. But... That's basically data that we have now. We know we don't need to actually do that. And we have to be careful with how we generate rare items in the future because this is all working towards the grand decluttering project, which involves us um, essentially generating multiple rares and picking the best as far as the mods go. And there's no need for us to double dip here with talismans. As you say, talismans were an incredibly exciting thing to find because you were very likely to get an upgrade, far more likely than any other type of item in the game because they were just so, so, so skewed towards good ones. And... Um, that's bad from an expectations point of view, and also it's just different to all the other items in the game. So we're fixing that while understanding that we do actually need to finish the decluttering project, which is going to, um, for those who aren't aware, basically, you get a lot of drops in Path of Exile, and we're essentially finding a way of turning item quantity into um, rolling multiple items and dropping the best ones instead. So in a situation where you clear a map and have 400 rares on the ground or whatever, that's going to be a much lower number of rares, but it's equivalent to seeing more than 400. So instead of having to ID seven swords and see if any are good, you'll be IDing one or two swords, which are equivalent or better than the seven that you previously would have seen. Yeah. And so this is something we're working towards um, because there's a lot of items in Path of Exile, and this, of course, you know, affects the, the whole clicking thing where players are saying they have to pick up a lot of stuff. Obviously, if there is a you know, more reasonable number of items falling, then um, there's far less clicking involved there. Um, it probably has an effect on performance with rendering all the items on the ground and so on. I mean, a, a small effect, but every item is technically a draw call for the item and for its shadow. So reducing the vast the vast sea of white items on the ground certainly helps. And so that's a project we're working on. But it's also a dangerous one because right now you're used to seeing a lot of items and you ID them and they're generally bad, which is okay because you're not meant to get an upgrade every area. But if we say, okay, items are better now, and we reduce it a lot, so you get far fewer items, and you ID those, and those are also still all bad, which is okay, because you're not meant to get an upgrade every area, you'll say, what is the point? You've just given me far less items, and they're still bad. Because it's hard to tell the difference between two random distributions that aren't spitting out tens at you, if you see what I mean. And so we want to make so sure we do this in a way where the game still less, feels yeah. very compelling to find item upgrades without making it too easy as a result in order to bribe players to like the system. And it's very true what anyway, Chris is saying, but we'll get it sorted out, but that's basically have right now, for <laughs> later this year, hopefully. It is an interesting psychological challenge because, um, <clears throat> like, on the surface, it seems like a great idea to reduce the items, and I'm really looking forward to that, and I, I hope that it does work out really well, but uh, it's an interesting, like, yeah, concern uh, that uh, there's way too many it might not drop, end up feeling drop. right. It's one of those things where if we, if we did release it with Path of Exile 2, is this is how items work now. Look, there aren't that many of them, but look, there's a fun game where the progression is good and you're finding compelling rare upgrades and everything is balanced around it and have fun. Things would be 100% fine, right? You know, you can, yeah. you can pitch it wherever you want to on the rare power curve and the game still works. But we have a game right now where players have expectations to get upgrades at a certain pace. And if we just said, look, the new reality is upgrades are far slower or something, that wouldn't be acceptable. So we have to make sure that the power... Um, ascension of items is similar to how it currently is. It's just done through players not having to read as many items per area. 
Um, Pee-wee 2 does seem like a good time to do that change, but is there any chance like this loot squish thing is happening potentially earlier than Pee-wee 2? I think, it, I think it needs to happen earlier, and I say that because A, we want to actually make sure it's good by the time Pee-wee 2 is released, and this is something mm. we can, like, I don't want to jeopardize the launch of Pee-wee 2. I would much rather get feedback from players and try to solve problems. Like, I sympathize with the fact that people say they have to click a lot, right? And sure, action RPGs are about picking up items and clicking, but there's a lot of items in Path of Exile, more than there should be. And so that's something that we probably need to address. Um, and players have raised the whole, maybe it affects performance. And undoubtedly, everything affects performance. Um, that's not the primary reason for fixing it, but it certainly helps to, you know, reduce the sea of items on the ground and just readability and approachability. You know, how would want Path of Exile to feel approachable to new players? And if they look at a guy playing a map with at the sea, like the floor is entirely covered with items, and that's with the loot filter on. Um, there are many reasons why we do need to address it earlier. It just means we have to do it in a way that's uh, careful to uh, not um, cause players to feel that we've wrecked drops in the game, even though our goal is equivalent or better item power from drops. Um, I just mentioned that, like, people randomly seeing the game thing. <laughs> I'm just curious why there isn't, like, a cap on character size in regards to Headhunter. Why, why do we get shit yeah. point of view <laughs> Headhunter characters? Instead of just, like, I don't know, three times the size characters. Yeah. Which is still impressive. Like change, but... I'm just, just curious. I, I don't know why there isn't a cap on it. On one second, <laughs> the team says there is a cap now in three fourteen. Well, there you go. Look what you've done, Ziggy. Oh, you talk oh, finally! Holy I crap! I killed Shin Point of View single handedly. It's all yeah, my fault. Right there, they're, they're live edited in the game as you're suggesting. So, what else would you like changed? <laughs> I, I did. I'm not even. I'm not even sad. No, I need to be changed. <laughs> you watch like cute sure dog like play or something. Of players, like I love Shin Kenobi. The guys is <laughs> bigger than the whole the game. It's under a section called Ziggy Nerfs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect. Nice. That's <laughs> oh, actually man. good. Makes the game oh, look better. Great. Um, I did want to ask about the uh, like rare rolling system. It was used in Ritual on certain items, right? Where yeah. they would have the better rolls. Is it potentially used on the rewards from? Uh, uh ultimatum ultimatum that's the one yes it is and that's because this is a case where we say to you this is the reward you'll be getting and if that's a random rare with normal odds people will look at it and say i see a thousand random rares in a typical play session i don't care about your item whereas yep. we're going to show them some good items and they're going to say i'm going to risk everything and then they're going to die and then they'll be angry and we'll Perfect. laugh <laughs> you'll laugh i know you do i know you will <laughs> Yeah, is there anywhere else you're looking to add that system like to i don't know like certain league specific uh reward pools blighted pustules things like that it's generally cases where it's not okay to drop a pile of items i would rather generally drop a reasonable number of items for players to choose between but in the case that we have to present them with one then we'll make sure that it's a compelling one and things like the display cabinets mm. in um heist or the so you know the items in the uh, ritual window uh, or the ultimatum offerings soon. those things there we don't get the ability to give them a whole screen full of stuff to pick from so i, I like well, the garage sale thing of going through a bunch of things to trying to work out be what's too best much longer but um we use the well rolled stuff in order to offer a person, people a single item now of course we'll be doing decluttering to make sure that when i say you're going to look through some rings to find out what's best i'm not talking about 400 of them you know but <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll hit a sweet spot uh, that was my earlier Path of Exile League currency making strategy to look through hundreds and hundreds of rings and amulets. Yeah, well, we're going to get a PewDiePie shop, though. Merch, merch uh, there was some mention of Val skills. Um, yeah. Will we be getting any new Val skills? There are no new Val skills in this expansion, but one could argue that if you're taking a Val skill that um, was previously barely used and making sure it is good enough to be used, then that's essentially the meta introduction of that skill. So. Okay. Um, we're hoping to see more use of the, the worst skills. And a lot of this is, like, we look at the characteristics of the Val skills that are used, and those are ones that have a lot of damage and cheap soul costs. And so we thought, well, what if we give a lot of damage and cheap soul costs to the other ones as well? And so <laughs> I've been told not to oversell this. Do not hype them too much, Chris. These are just numerical rebalances. Be very careful. But it's exciting, guys. Be excited. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't well, listen. the messages. <laughs> you didn't listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, getting no. the, the changes will be good. They'll make more Val, Val skills be um, usable. Yeah, and they'll they'll hype it up because remember lastly, the, remember the lastly, Siri base type changes and so on. So it should be pretty exciting. <laughs> well, not too exciting. On the <laughs> other hand, very exciting. If I'm not the one doing the live stream next time, then you'll know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> not allowed anymore. <laughs> I have specs, and I'm something. not going to let Chris say dumb shit. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Uh, uh, I, 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 <laughs> I <begs. laughs>
Um, <laughs> okay, where, where am I? I'd like to uh, ask about something near and dear to my heart. Um, can we expect any new quality of life improvements, uh, particularly Oof. in the realm of reducing the number of clicks in the game or player strain? We're looking into QR world changes we can make, and we try to surreptitiously wrap them into each release that we do. So there's bits and pieces. Um, nothing click or strain related in this expansion, and that's partly because I want to try to tackle the decluttering as a way of really solving it. Like I don't feel that suddenly action RPGs shouldn't involve clicking on items to pick them up. I think that that's been fine for a couple of decades, and humans' phys physiology hasn't changed. But I do completely acknowledge Path of Exile has way too many items to pick up. So yes, yes. we will solve this probably by that method. Um, I also have a pretty firm belief that it's important that in order for something to matter to players it has to have some degree of weight in the game right that's why items have you know the tetris thing going on in the inventory and why you've got to go and stash them in specific places and things have to have identity and clicking on them in order to pick them up is an important part of that so i wouldn't want a thing where as you run around the items are automatically scooped up into your auto managed spreadsheets that you can you know export to excel and so on um, which is kind of the way that that goes. It's a bit of a slippery slope thing. Um, but yeah, people having to click too much, we need to address that. And whenever we're dropping currency, for example, we do ask, what are some reasonable sizes here? So you get a couple of stacks, a few stacks to pick up. We make sure to fix it so we're not dropping pennies everywhere, like in some leagues. We are very consciously aware of that. But I think a lot of it's going to come from decluttering. Um, and we're not afraid of making QOL changes, right? A discussion we're having soon is what QOL changes can we make? And it's you know, it's good to keep pumping those out, just the right ones rather than ones yeah, that we're we kind of badgered into doing. Purely needs the uh, uh, Parandus sure. coins are like a perfect example of picking up pennies where you'd get Parandus chests that drop like literally 10 or 15 piles of two pennies. Um, sure. Obviously, those are being increased now as part of the Parandus change, um, but are like their piles being condensed since those are things that can like super easily stack. I'll make sure that we're not having 10 or 15 piles to pick up Fantastic. when we're doing the changes here because that does sound unreasonable. I beg you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, like give us another like one would be like I noticed. Four, so I, I'd been like tracking my clicks a little bit in Pee Wee, and one thing I noticed was like a lot of my clicks are coming from transferring small items from my inventory to my stash. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better now that I don't have to change tabs every time I want to transfer something, so that happens automatically. But is there any like possibility of being able to do that sort of stuff in like fewer clicks to transfer over to your stash? I've already picked the item up and felt its weight at that point. A fair argument. Um, there's some technical considerations with moving multiple items at the same time we'd have to look into, but that's something I'll discuss with the team. No promises, though. I promise I would patiently wait and watch the items go tuk, 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 over from my inventory. Probably be really satisfying, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to hearing uh, more about it. As I said, it is something close to my heart a little bit sometimes. A um, uh, question about the breach stones. So now that we can use blessings to upgrade our breach stones, it's going to be a lot easier to get pure breach stones. Yes. Uh, is the XP getting nerfed from those at all? No. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, there you go. <laughs> Lots of XP. Lots of XP. Uh, we've got a lot more community questions now that have piled up. I've woven a few in at relevant points. Thanks for asking the questions, folks. We have Buse asking, uh, what was the change in the life pool showing leech or something? So the life pool was doing... Uh, very perceptive, by the way, Buse, yeah, doing interesting. some interesting things during a certain point. Right. Okay, so you're looking at the Petrified Blood skill there. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but this yeah, is the one it? where while you're on low life, which is now at 50% as the threshold, um, hits that you take will partly be applied instantly like normal and partly af affect you over time. And so it shows two levels in your health orb, one of them being the level that's kind of trickling down to. Hmm. I uh I like mm. the sounds of that mechanic. There was also the um the like more low life y stuff that's based around not having uh auras reserved. So we saw one character that had an aura on and then another point didn't have an aura on and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's a bit more playing around there with the idea of low life this league to check Oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. We've got eight new gems in total and it really solidifies but it both makes low life easier to maintain, safer for people, lots of different builds, lots of skills that explicitly spend life by themselves like a lot of the blood skills do and also ones that count how much life you spend and so it's it's a thing where you use the skill and if you use it enough times or other skills that, that consume really life cool. then it ramps itself up a bit mm, and so okay. there are a lot of different ways to build blood themed characters there's like a ton of interesting details in this uh, video so i encourage you if you're interested in some of that stuff to go back and watch the vod i've seen it three times now so <laughs> i've noticed a bit more and more each time but uh particularly the skill section if you're interested in that life stuff because uh, i'm pretty curious the reap is pretty interesting play too out. Uh, Rodrebo asks, with the buff to Abyssals, will other belt implicits be buffed to compensate, or will Stygians be stronger again? Everyone's shaking their heads at me. 
<laughs> That's a nice. The jeans are the way to go. Um, as has often been the case. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Zisu asks, will there be a change in the amount of essences or you simply want to change the power of them? My understanding is it's just the power that's changed here. Nice. Okay. Um, it was regular essences didn't change apart from the tier five screamings being able to reroll things like a chaos orb now, right? Yeah, screaming acts like a chaos orb, and I'm pretty sure the changes are just to the high end ones. Other than that, can you confirm that? the corrupted ones, right? Oh, right. So they say there's numeric improvements to general essences. So this would oh, have okay. been a buff focused balance sweep, and that's what we've tried to do here: is a buff focused balance sweep to the rewards of the past leagues. Interesting. Some of those are already uh, like better than tier one of the relevant modifiers. So it'll be interesting to see. Maybe some of the ones that aren't are now to that power level or something. Curious to see. Um, D General Lee asks, what will happen to Twice Enchanted Lab? A double reroll? Yeah, I'm curious about this. Will it present all six options at once or will it be like the three options? You apply it to an item and then there's another three options. There's a little one in your that's way time to get to right. There's some UI that says how many times you get to use the bench. Ah, fantastic. So my understanding is it presents you with your three plus two options, and you can, you know, sort of three sense. plus the other base types options, and then you can pick it twice. Yeah, if, if it was all at once, it would kind of be a little confusing because you'd be like thinking that you're only getting one enchantment, but just more options. That'd be like a completely different mechanic. Our past play. content rework started with let's make the labyrinth give you three choices. Yeah, that what was what is that? that thing started. Then it went into there. itemized it's like a hammered in. as our two headline features, and then Style. so much other stuff changed. It was awesome. I can't believe like how many of those things were like literally my exact things that I wanted to see, like the itemized temples and the weapons. <laughs> oh, and I just wanted to like point this out that the um, items dropping from the boss in the temple. Mm. Um, so now, like, the items that drop from the boss that with the specific modifiers are based on the runes in the temple. Yep. That's how I thought it worked when the League first came out, and I was really disappointed when it didn't work that way. So I'm glad to see that finally come back around. It'll help. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, doing a bit more temple action now, actually. I kind of wanted to. Um, doo -doo -doo, uh, Beefcake Crunch asks, are there Atlas tree nerfs, i.e. the Harbingers? Oh, uh, yeah, the uh, Echoes of the Atlas passive trees. Right. So I haven't seen the changes for this, so I'm going to talk generally speaking here. We introduced the system in the last league, and that means when it's introduced, there's going to be stuff that's wrong. Yep. So there's going to be no, stuff it's... that had to be buffed a lot. There's going to be stuff that had to be nerfed a lot. And so I would expect fully to back. see some of the most abusive stuff probably toned down, and I would expect to see some of the stuff no one was picking to be more powerful. But I have not seen the changes, so I'm just making that up. Let me ask the team. How accurate is that? Yeah. They say, yep. <laughs> yeah, so there are a bunch of changes. I mean, it's the thing we're learning about as we go. We, we make the system, we test it as best we can with our team of, you know, 150 people here, and then we dump it on millions of people online and see how they break it, and then they really break it. And then we can either choose to leave it broken, which is the wrong choice when you're running a game that's going to be around another few decades, or make some changes. And so this is version two. Um, it's still meant to be powerful and compelling, and we'll see what people think. Awesome stuff. A uh, bunch of people spamming in the chat are just spamming flasks um so i'm guessing they're curious if there's going to be any flasking changes no flask changes in this one Except i this assume one. that's the the idea of like pressing flask frequently which is something yeah we're very aware of the feedback we just don't have a change to make at the stage and we don't want to make like small changes that don't really fix the problem or whatever gotcha uh malinoff asks is there a fix for group maven witnesses and invitations, changes to sinking progression, nurse to six players earning progression, etc. Don't think so. We'll look into it. Yeah. So th there's like a few questions around the idea of like multiplayer atlas progression. Um, having yeah. done quite a bit of that now, there's like some stuff that works really well and other stuff that is a little awkward. So I think it's kind of okay. just stuff that needs to be looked into across the board for a few this is prompting reasons. some conversation with the designers so we'll make sure that we look into that and have a look uh, no promises mm -hmm. that that's ready by next week's release but yeah it'll certainly be something we investigate later yeah awesome stuff it's i i feel like it's at an awkward point where um it's starting to become quite good for party play where things are working so then it's really jarring when certain stuff doesn't mm -hmm. work yeah. um so looking forward to yeah, yeah, yeah. seeing more yeah, about fine. that then um i'd like to do some more party play this, this like... ask, can you ask <laughs> i will <laughs> is, is that all will fractured items get a similar treatment like split items can you five to one vendor fractured items for clean bases i guess that might also apply to split bases too 
Oh, so one of the team members has just clarified that there's a change for the Uncharted Realms invitation. Only the map only gets the witness rather than everyone on the party. That's in 314. And someone else says we're changing so the capture of bosses in Uncharted Realms isn't shared. It's only the owner. Right, okay, fair enough. So that's one change there. Okay. Um, with regard to the fracturing bases, I don't know of any changes there. No, hey, no changes hey, to the oh, fracturing stuff. Now. Nice. Chad is very excited. Thanks for the extra detail and background devs. <laughs> no worries. I always love the Get like some drops. Slide and talking to the background yeah, devs. I would so not dare do one of these by myself. <laughs> I actually got a couple I, I rewards on uh, Gauntlet. I got a re I love it reclaim. When, like, one of the devs randomly like kind of pops two in of them. and mentions some things, or you like bring Neon over or something. <laughs> I love those moments. Um, Sekna asks, "What are your thoughts on migrating ha hardcore leagues to SC leagues to encourage people to try out hardcore?" This is one of the things that sounds really good at face value, right? Like, I'm a hardcore player, and I would absolutely love it if I can just keep playing in the standard, the equivalent standard league. But historically, the reasons why we didn't do this was that we felt it would be demoralizing for you to be playing standard, taking it seriously. And by standard, I mean the standard current challenge league, taking it real seriously. And then some hardcore player appears above you on the ladder, super angry that he's now in your trash pool of a league, blah, 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 blah. You see? And... Maybe that's just a psychological thing, but that's the reason why we had it so it goes to real hardcore, as a real standard when um, a hardcore character dies. There's also the thing where hardcore is meant to be impactful. Like back in the day in traditional action RPGs, when you die in hardcore, you lose your character, just gone. You can't log in, right? Here we have it so you can keep a shrine to your character in standard league. And I get it. That's basically useless for a lot of players. They're never going to actually go and play that character in standard. Yeah, but, but there is meant to be a consequence to death, and I kind of feel that the type of player who would start to play hardcore because standard league, standard challenge league is their fallback plan is probably not the type of player with the temperament to really enjoy hardcore for what it is. And so I don't think we're going to change that in the near future. But yeah, it sounds it sounds good at face value. Uh, Envious yeah, yeah, and yeah, myself coincidentally just, ask any updates on did. racing, community events, and things like race seasons and stuff like that. If you didn't know, people, there was. Uh, Path of Exile was featured on GDQ recently for the first yeah, time, which was super exciting and really awesome job. And Tai Tai Killer set a world record. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Tai Tai. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, in terms of racing updates, we're just slowly working towards our goal of having a you know integrated race system, and we're trying hard to support community events. If you're um if you're running a large scale community event, you know to get in contact with Vex and the community team to try to arrange some stuff. And so you know. Racing is important to us. I know I said at XOCON that 2020 would be the year of racing, and then that got shut down by a number of external factors. Um, so we're trying to support it as much as we can, but we haven't yet got spare development resources to put a lot of push into the racing stuff. Hopefully soon um, we'll begin to be able to roll out some improvements, though. I'm going to start a custom now where every one of these Q&As I ask, um, is there going to be any, uh, any word on uh, um, Path of Exile Royale? One day. One day, come on, man. That's what you get in the next one. <laughs> okay. I will. I know, because you just said you would. <laughs> come Zeus on, man. Asks, Any quality up of life updates for fishing? Mm, oh, we please. never patch no those. Yeah. Fishing stuff was certainly uh, hinted at in the video somewhere, there among was. all the other things. I saw that. You got the vendor recipe wrong. You clicked accept on the wrong vendor recipe, by the way. It didn't work. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Four people have tried it already. <laughs> uh, all right thank you very much chris for the oh program. man get thank fishing in there man great questions everyone hope you really enjoy ultimatum awesome Pee -wee fishing i want all right um we'll see you guys all for uh bay class soon with rory um but that's it for now there we go class possibly I i'm gonna listen to this later um Definitely, I'm, I'm gonna listen, listen to this later for sure. Um, but thank you guys for watching, hanging out. Uh, this is gonna be a YouTube video as well. Uh, if you want to comment down below, what are your thoughts of Ultimatum? Uh, I appreciate or hit that subscribe button. I really, really appreciate it as well. And thank you, chat, for people coming in, chit chatting, and hanging out. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna be uploading this on YouTube, and I'll be on later tonight. So for more Monster Hunter. And uh, yeah, it's on April 16th, which is that next Friday then? Is that Friday?